Good afternoon, baseball fans. Chris Terrell here with Rotopros.com to bring you my core plays for the eight-game main slate on Wednesday, July 31st. It's the last day of the month in July. We're rolling into uh, the end of the season. It's getting into a real grind here as summer's coming to a close on the baseball season. Very important to watch your bankroll management. Stay disciplined down the stretch. Make sure you're still choosing the right contest. We talk a lot about playing 70 to 80 percent of your nightly buy-ins and cash games. Um, a lot of the stuff we do in the one-on-one -on -one coaching in our chat room that we've talked about all year long. Um, if you're not a Rotor's Pros member, make sure to get over to rotopros.com and get your free trial today. Um, it gives you access to our Slack channel, our one-on-one -on -one coaching, premium articles, pre lock live shows, um, our lineup skeletons. Um, pretty much the biggest thing that we get feedback from our customers is just the time that we put in answering questions uh, with quick responses pretty much any time of the day covering all the sports as well so get over to rotopros.com click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner and get your free three-day trial if you sign up for a weekly membership or a seven-day trial if you sign up for a monthly membership or a seven-day trial if you sign up for a yearly membership also if you use promo code MLB when signing up once your free trial is up, you're going to get 50% off your very first purchase. So looking at the slate tonight, we do have some good pitching options. As you can see here on the left side of the screen, um, we've got some excellent K upside. We've got DeGrom at 31.2%. We've got Lucas Giolito at 29.7% K rate. Um, Jose Urquidy up there at 28.8%. Jose, sorry, Vince Velasquez at 27.3%. And then Lyles at 24.9, Miner at 24.8. Then we start dropping in the um, below league average here. Looking at the slate, we've got uh, Jose Barrios at 21.8 and Kyle Hendricks uh, kicking things off there or finishing things off at 21.4% K rate. I'm just going to go over, share the screen. We're going to go through a few of my pitching options that I'm looking at tonight. Um, and then we will jump in and we will just have a look at some of the um, bats that stand out to me tonight, teams that we look at. We really before lineups start coming out before we know some of the you know individual uh, values that pop up we really like to look at teams as a whole which situations are best and then as we get closer to lock and lineups start coming out that's when we really start looking at uh, the players there as well so that's what we're going to do here in this video so let's just jump right in and we will start with Jacob deGrom here on the main slate as you can see, we've got the early slate and the afternoon games loaded on here. But like I said, we're going to concentrate on the main slate. Jacob deGrom is easily the number one pitcher in the model tonight. 11-8 on DraftKings, 12 on FanDuel. A low low total game, minus 168 against Chicago. Like I said, he's he leads the slate in K percentage as well as swinging strike rate. Um, it is a small sample size for Jose Yerquity here with the 294 XFIP. Um, but with deGrom's you know, larger sample size. He's the leader in, in my eyes here when it comes to XFIP at 329. Go look at his game logs here over the last, uh, since he got blown up against Miami in mid-May. That's something I just like to sort by that quite a while ago. Since then, he has been absolutely elite. We'll go type in that sample size. We'll look at the numbers overall. So he's got 286 ERA overall. Since that start, he's had a 210 ERA, 326 XFIP. He's only given up more than two earned runs once um, against Atlanta here. He's shown tons of K upside. Four times he's hit uh, double-digit strikeouts in those 12 starts. Um, only once he's gone below, or sorry, twice he's gone below seven strikeouts. So he's easily my number one <clears throat> going up against Chicago. Who has an 84 WRC plus against right-handed pitching, 26% K rate. Um, over the last seven days, they got a 44 WRC plus, so that is just not optimal whatsoever. Um, excellent matchup here, 67 WRC plus over the last 14 days there as well. So everything stands out for the matchup for DeGrom to be, uh, at least on DraftKings, paying up that extra 1100 here for him. On FanDuel, it's a little bit closer. We get a little bit of salary relief because he has hit that 12K range. Barrios is 10-4. He's my second favorite option on the slate. A um, little bit more on the FanDuel side just because I think we can get some more balanced lineups built, you know, especially in cash games when you're looking at uh, Barrios and his uh, discount here. So he does get the better park as well. So he's got that. 
But what concerns me, uh, the reason I lean DeGrom over Brios here is a almost 10%. 9.2%, 9.4% difference in K rate, swinging strike rate. Um, the XFIP is over a run higher here. So this, to me, the safety isn't exactly there for Barrios as it is for DeGrom, even though they both have good matchups. Uh, what, Like I mentioned here, Miami is a 75. So they're second, I believe they're second to last to Detroit against right-handed pitching when it comes to WRC+. 25% K rate. Um, they haven't been striking out as much lately, but as you can see, 54 WRC plus last 14 days, 74 over the last seven days. If you want to pivot off those two who are likely the chalk, even though they are more expensive, uh, Lucas Giolito really stands out tonight on the opposite end of that DeGrom matchup. He's only 8,800 on FanDuel. He's a big, big dog here, but you know, if you were looking to lay a bet on an underdog tonight, I would definitely go there. Giolito hasn't been um, the same lately. He hasn't been the you know nearly as good as he has been, but he's still been an elite, near elite pitcher this year. I'll just go look at his stats here real quick. Yeah, sub four xFIP, three fifty two ERA, thirty percent K rate, fourteen percent swing and strike rate. So the upside is most definitely there for him. He's not given up a ton of hard contact. The x woba and x slugger right there in the same range as the woba and slugging percentage. You start looking at the matchup. A um, little below average for the Mets against right-handed pitching here. They're much better against lefties, so there, there is that. Um, but looking at the last 7, 14 days, they've been right around league average, but not striking out a ton. So I think he's going to be a little bit lower owned, especially on DraftKings. I think he makes a nice pivot there. He's probably going to be a little bit higher owned at only you know a sub-9K price tag on FanDuel. Mike Miner uh, is next up on my GPP targets here, going up against Seattle. That line hasn't been released yet just because they weren't sure the Seattle starter. I believe they're going to be using an opener with Wade LeBlanc will be in there, so that's what I've inserted into the sheet here. Miner started out the year uh, rolling really good. He started off... You know, his last three starts have really been a struggle for him. He's been able to keep the ERA at three despite those, but he's given up four plus earned runs in three straight starts. He's also given up seven home runs in those three starts. So there's a little bit of concern there. He's still going deep into the game, six, seven, and five innings in those last three starts. But the K rate is about league average, a little higher than league average there. He's facing a Seattle team that does strike out 26% against lefties, although they are slightly above average when it comes to WRC+. Plus. Um, right around league average when it comes to WOBA. But I do like that Miner has a 25% K rate versus Seattle, who strikes out 26% of the time. And then you, you look at the last 7 and 14 days, they've struck out, struck out, sorry about that, 29%. They've struck out 29% over the last 7 days, 27% over the last 14 days. So there's definitely con uh, concern there on the Seattle side of things. So I like uh, both Giolito and Miner as GPP pivots here. On DraftKings for uh, starting pitcher two, uh, I, I def the reason I really like paying out for DeGrom tonight and getting that extra 10% K rate and 5% swing and strike rate there is because there are some excellent options in the value range tonight. And starts with Vince Velasquez. Talked about him in his last start. He was, uh, you know, he exceeded expectations. He's only 7,500 this start, minus 130 favorite. The total is up a bit. It's it's 10. Um, the park is about mid. We've got some rain concerns that we're going to have to pay attention to. So right now, he's he wa I was leaning him more in cash, but I'm going to have to pay attention to the rain. So uh, stick with us in the members chat. We'll be talking about that throughout the day as we get closer to lock. He's got a 27% K rate backed up by a 12% swing and strike rate. Gives up a lot of hard contact. Um, the Giants have been better as of late, as you can see. Um, they came out of the All-Star break red hot. But they've been below average against righties, only 22% K rate. Whoop, sorry about that. Kind of slipped off. Okay, so looking at the last 7 and 14 days, they've been started to trend down again. They're really close to that wild card. So, they're, you know, I mean, they are playing hard. They haven't given up on the season by any means. But only a 73 WRC plus the last 7 days, 83 the last 14. So that uh, hot start of the playoffs has kind of gone away. I'm fully expecting uh, Bumgarner, someone to pay up, and uh, them to trade Bumgarner here today. I think that would be best for, for both sides. I mean, um, seeing him in a Yankee uniform, it's not something I like as a Jays fan, but it's something that definitely fits the Yankees. Uh, he's one of the best 
postseason starters that performers that you know I've uh, I've ever seen in my lifetime when it comes to World Series and stuff like that and clinching a, a title. So um, San Francisco is definitely there, but Velasquez, like I said, we're going to have to pay attention to the weather. But I do like the upside and the price um, fitting him with Jacob Degrom or Jose Barrios tonight. And then Jose Urquidy here. I know I'm probably butchering his name, but wrote about him last time. He was only 5K on DraftKings. He was a simple plug there. I only needed 10 points out of him. I think he put up 20 plus. So he crushed value. He was in like the 4 or 5X range. The price did come up to 7K. We still only need 14 points from him. Um, minus 132 here. So he is a favorite. Uh, going up against Cleveland, they just traded away Bauer. So it kind of hard to see what direction they're going. They're not far out of the playoffs, but they traded one of their best starters at Seems a little odd there, um, but uh, we'll kind of see where that goes. They get uh, Puig and Fran Mil Reyes back in return, so kind of get some outfield help there. So what I like about Yerkudi here is he's got a sub-3 XFIP, 29% carry. We talked about his um, K upside last time. That's backed up by a 13% swinging strike rate. And what else I like, especially when you're talking about floor, is that he doesn't walk anyone. It's a sub-4% walk rate, which is only 5 five pitchers on this whole entire slate with a sub 4% walk rate. It's a smaller sample size, of course, but good to see. And then he's facing Cleveland. Cleveland's been slightly below average uh, WRC plus wise against righties, uh, below average K rate, which don't like to see that for the upside. I think that gets a little bit of a boost going up against a high K upside pitcher. And then last uh, seven, 14 days, they've been slightly below average in WRC plus, but striking out a lot less. Um, so there is some risk there for sure, but for only 7K, we only need 14 points. Um, we don't even necessarily need the win if we can get 5, 6, um, even upside of 7Ks out of him tonight. So definitely like that for pitching. That's the direction I'm going to be going for pitching. So we'll jump over to a couple stacks that I like. Um, just talk about a couple that I've highlighted here. Obviously Minnesota for a couple reasons. You look at the trend line across here, every single split, they are bright green. Um, look, whether it's overall 14, seven, um, days, last 14, last seven days, they're red hot and top three, uh, both home and road top three offense, uh, versus righties and lefties top three offense. They're facing Sandy Alcantara who has a near 1.5 whip. Ton, uh, he's got an X VIP that is 1.2 runs worse than his ERA. He's not giving up a lot of home runs right now, but I see that coming back just with these other, these other numbers that we've got here. We look at, uh, well, you know, his, his ex-Woba and ex-Slugger kind of right in range with what we're looking at. But with that exit, I think Minnesota is going to have a lot of chance to score some runs tonight. And the funny part about my highlights here, as you can see, is my two favorite offenses transitioning into Oakland here, going up against Jordan Lyles, who's going to get his first start for Milwaukee, it appears. He's really struggled lately, 1.5 whip. He gives up a ton of home runs, a ton of hard contact. He's going up against Oakland um, in Oakland. So those two parks are... As you can see, right near the worst on the slate, Miami is the worst. Um, Oakland is pretty close. But I just like the matchups for those two, even though they are down when you're looking at implied runs here. But both of those offense provide some value throughout the lineup as well as some high power bats. You can stack them. You can use them for cash games. You can use them for value one-offs. Um, that's why I have them highlighted as my core teams tonight because I just like both of their situations. And then I do like Tampa as a value. they got a lot of value bats in their lineup that I think you can use if you want to go with a value stack. If you're maybe using two high-end starting pitchers on DraftKings, um, they're going up against Rick Porcello. He's really struggled lately. As you can see, he's got a 5.55 ERA. The XFIP's only .2 runs lower, and he's got a 1.5 whip, 42% fly balls. He hasn't given up as many home runs this season, only 11.6% home run to fly ball rate. Um, he has given up home runs in five straight, twice with multiple home runs. So not, you know, that's kind of coming back to him, uh, regression there a little bit. He's only striking out seven per nine. Um, so I definitely like Tampa bats here. And I believe, I'm just going to look that up here real quick. There is rain concern in that game as well. So we're going to want to pay attention to that. But if it looks like it's maybe going to be a bit dicey, people are going to avoid it just because there's so many other options here, Minnesota. Oakland, um, Philadelphia, I'm going to talk about here in a minute. I think Tampa comes in as not only a value stack, but an under-owned stack tonight against Purcello, who's, uh, who's really been struggling. 
in a good hitter's park, and it looks like the wind's going to be blowing out 8 to 10 miles an hour straightaway center. Um, looks like it's pretty humid, and temperatures in 85 to 90 range. So, I mean, the hitting environment's definitely going to be good. If that rain stays away, I'll definitely be on Tampa Bay tonight. And then Philadelphia uh, going up against Samarja, just another candidate, another guy who, um, I guess, I, I don't want to say he's been terrible, but he's been uh, worse than what his ERA shows, almost a run higher on the XFIP. He's been pretty good on the whip side of things, 1.2. Anything below 1.2 I consider uh, above average. Um, but what I'm liking out of him tonight, and maybe a little bit lower on on the Philly side of things, is one, he's given up five home runs in his last three starts, up to a 13.5% swinging strike rate, or sorry, uh, at home run to fly ball rate on the season. And then just looking at his splits, he's been about, it looks like about 60 points, almost 60 points worse in in terms of WOBA to left-handed batters. Um, the slugging percentage is 110 points higher versus left-handed batters. 12 of his 19 home runs given up this season have come against left-handed batters. That's double the rate than it is against righties. So um, we'll get into it here in a second, but uh, let's just go to the individual player sections here. A couple players that I've highlighted for the night so far. Kepler for Minnesota, obviously, going up against Alcantara. Talked about Minnesota. Cruz is getting a little expensive. He's going to be more GPP for me. Um, he's normally someone you look at against lefties, but his numbers against righties have been solid as well. 390, Woba, 144 WRC plus, and a whopping 52% hard contact rate. I just, I'm paying up for pitchers, so he's going to be more of a GPP play for me uh, tonight. But on the Minnesota side of things, also looking at GPP from Eddie Rosario. Uh, Ramon Laureano, I'll be taking him off. It looks like he got hurt. <clears throat> He's going to be out. Uh, Bryce Harper, someone that's going to stand out for me. I really like the price on DraftKings at only 4300 Talked about lefties. So we've got... He, he will be upgraded to... Let's put it this way. He'll be upgraded to green if that weather um, ends up staying away in Philly tonight, which, you know, if we look at the quick forecast here yeah it's about 50 60 percent so very risky i'm going to go back and change him to gpp play but again the phillies like tampa bay if that rain like it looks like it's going to be iffy and people are going to be fading it um but if it's only 40 50 percent maybe a chance of in-game delay no real chance of postponement if it's not a big system that's going to be coming in on the radar that we're going to we'll look at later in the day I'll definitely give an upgrade to Harper and the Phillies if they're going to be a little bit lower owned tonight just because of the power upside with those lefties. So I'll be looking at Kinjury as well. Um, Lorenzo Cain is, seems like a buy-low candidate right now, so that's why I've highlighted him as kind of a one-off going up against Brett Anderson. He hasn't been as good against lefties, but it, like I said, it's a buy-low, um, and he's been pretty good, and he hits right in front of Yeller. So there's a lot going on there. I'll definitely take uh, the downgrade in splits. And then Adam Hazley. Um, lefties against Samarja, again, I'll use as a value play, almost minimum price on FanDuel if that weather looks to be okay. Shortstops, I'm looking at Polanco and Semyon as my top two core plays. They're good, um, you know, they're good in both splits. They both got good matchups, like I talked about, against Lyles and Alcantara. They're right there in the exact same price range. Um, in terms of splits, Polanco's been a lot better against righties than Semyon, although they're both above average. So I would lean Polanco there a little bit. Um, they both got high on base percentages. So they give you some safety. They give you some upside. 16 and 17 home runs uh, piece. Uh, Semyon has got 79 runs scored. So he gives you that as well. So those are my top two shortstops. Um, looking at Tampa Bay, I like uh, Domus. Uh, he hits down in the order. The price has come up a tiny bit. But I'm definitely looking at him as a value play in that high total game. Tampa Bay almost had five implied runs tonight. At third base, Miguel Sano, especially on Fando, where the price is a little bit lower. He's been hot lately. The numbers against righties have come up. Um, he's striking out like 5% less over the last month than he has for the season. I know it's still like 30% K rate, but it, it's 5 6% lower. Um, so I'll definitely be looking at that. Matt Chapman as a GPP play only because he's been struggling lately. I think he's like 5 for his last 39 or something like that. It's a buy low for him on DraftKings. If you're stacking Oakland, you know, he's hitting second. So, I mean, you're just you're going to have to fit him in there even though he is cold. And he does, we know he's got the power. He hits right as well. He's got a good matchup. So, it all all stands out there. I'll also look at uh, Louis Arias for Minnesota. 
against Alcantara. He's hit right. He's very well, very low price. And then more of a punt yet, uh, Matt Duffy has hit right as well. He's been good since he's come back into the lineup, and he gets a good matchup versus Purcello. He's chief on both sides. Second base, uh, Robel Garcia, if he's back hitting the leadoff, although he's only got one hit in the last two games hitting the leadoff, I'll definitely look at that value. Cesar Hernandez stands out to me probably more than anyone at second base. He's been pretty good lately besides, you know, lack of power, but he scores some runs, so if he'll get a big boost if he gets back up near the top of the lineup. And then Keston Hira, very expensive with Hira at the top, but he's been very good. He provides power. He provides safety. He's hit lefties fairly well. He's been a little bit better against righties. I see those numbers coming up. He's almost a 50% hard contact rate. So uh, league average WRC plus, I can definitely see uh, jumping up here as he gets more sample size there. First base, um, Olsen and Canna. Definitely Canna on FanDuel with only 2,800. He's hit righties well. He's been one of their best hitters since the All-Star break. He's 144 WRC plus against righties. Matt Olson has been good. He's cooled off a little bit lately, but he's got a, he provides more power on that side of things, so he'd be more of your upside play. Canna's more of your floor play. Paul Goldschmidt's been heating up. Not the greatest of matchups here. Um, still a little bit underpriced, I would say, on DraftKings, considering how good he's been lately. Just go look at his trends real quick to show you what I mean. For the season, 113 WRC+. Plus, but over the last 30 days... He, He's got a 168 WRC plus, 187 over the last 14, 260 over the last seven days. So I love to see those trends uh, looking at the four areas, season last 30, 14, and seven days. So Paul Goldschmidt definitely stands out. As you can see, FanDuel's already adjusted his price back into the elite tier, most expensive first baseman on the slate. And then Marvin Gonzalez down here would be my value play at first base. Um, Alcantara. Sorry, i got a kid yelling at me over here. At catcher, a uh, bunch of different ways you can go. Garver, just very expensive on DraftKings. I would definitely be looking at him more. It's GPP, but I'm not spending 5300 on a on a catcher for cash games going up against El Cantara. Travis Darno has been not only one of the hot, uh, not only the hottest catcher, but one of the hottest players in the league since the All Star break. Um, again, expensive, but against Purcello, I'll use him as a GPP play there as well. I think the ownership spread out between Garver and Darno, so it really matters on if you're stacking Tampa Bay or stacking Minnesota and GPPs, um, which one of those catches you're going to go with. But looking at their trends here, um, Garver's really struggled over the last seven days, but he's been red hot over the last month, 150 plus WRC plus there. And then Travis Darno last 30 days is a 202 WRC plus, and that's 205 over the last seven days. So that that's really continued for him. Looking at the trends, Jason Castro has been better. He gets in there normally uh, against right-handed pitching, a little bit cheaper for you. Matt Weeders is my favorite catcher today, um, going up against Kendricks. He's been a lot better lately as well. Um, 114 WRC plus last 14, 115 last 30 days. And then if you're looking to punt, if Manny Pena gets in the lineup tonight, he crushes lefties, although it's a small sample size this season. He's been amazing against lefties, and he's pretty much punt prices on both sides there. Um, going up against Brett Anderson as well. So he hasn't been too great either. So that's the way I'm looking at stacks, looking at pitchers tonight. If you have any questions whatsoever leading up to lock, make sure to head over to um, the Roto Pros members chat and hit me up with any questions there or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine or in the comment section just below this video and make sure to like and subscribe we've got a ton more videos coming down the line um, I do videos Mondays and Wednesdays I do a joint show with Josh on Fridays and then I do a NASCAR preview show um, usually Fridays or Saturday and then a live show the day of the race there as well so stay tuned like and subscribe turn your notifications on um, thanks for watching the video. Let's go get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.